Hi, this is Richard from Boat Fittings and today I'm going to be looking at wiring of bilge pumps with a float switch. And there's a couple of different ways of doing this and I wanted to show you uh, both ways and kind of talk about advantages and disadvantages. If you find this kind of guide useful, it would be great if you could subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. So I've actually done a video on how to use a float switch and a bilge pump before. Um, we had a float switch and a manual switch and I'm going to just recap on what we did then with this wiring diagram here. So we've got the bilge pump, we've got our power, we've got a fuse to protect the electrics, we've got our float and as the water level rises in the bilge, the float operates. But we also have this, I'll call it an override switch. So you can decide whether the whole system is, is uh, set and live or not. Some people uh, ha have, had a view, have a view on that, that there's a potential flaw with this way of doing it, which is what if the float switch were to fail in any way? And there's two ways I can think that could happen. One is inside of its uh, electric um, contacts, something could uh, give up and fail so it doesn't function as a switch anymore. The other way is, uh, being as this is in your bilge, something could get in the way, a bit of rope, uh, a fender, something that shouldn't be there and get on top of the float and stop it lifting up with a water level. So um, in that way it could stop working. So that brings us to a way of wiring things a little bit differently that improves on that situation. Which is what we've done today. So in this system, the system can be operated by the float. But if for any reason the float didn't work, didn't function, we've got an, a manual override switch. So that is shown on this circuit diagram here. We've got the positive coming to our fuse. We've got the uh, pump over here and we've got two, two kind of feeds or two ways of feeding the pump. So if either of these switches is operated to the closed position, then the pump will turn on. So uh, it's a really uh, simple circuit. Um, but I know that sometimes when you come back to look at these things in terms of the physical components, it can get a bit confusing. So what I'm going to do now just to uh, help is take this circuit apart and just put it back together um, in, in, in simple steps to make it hopefully really clear. We have a negative and a positive from the bilge pump. Negative is really easy. That just goes straight to the negative of the power source, which in, on your boat would be the battery or the, the uh, wire coming from the battery. The positive, we're gonna run through the float switch. So one of the arms from the float switch, we are going to connect to the positive of the uh, bilge pump and then the other arm uh, wire from the float switch is going to come via our inline fuse to the positive of the power source. So actually we, we built a, a functioning circuit at this point. If you, if you turn on the float switch then uh, the pump will operate. So what I just need to do from here is add in the other way of operating it, which is via our uh, little toggle switch. Um, so what we're going to do is just from this uh, positive feed um, part of the circuit, we're going to branch off in a parallel circuit to the switch. From, and the other um, terminal of the switch gets fed to the uh, positive feed. 
and now either either switch will operate it. So really simple circuit. Um, I would say in terms of having a surety that you're always going to be able to turn the pump on in one way or another this is superior in, in a sense we've got two ways of operating it as I say if that float switch doesn't work for any reason we can override it which is nice I would suggest that we can maybe even improve on that a little further next time because I'm going to show how this would be fitted into a system where we've got a main switch panel in the boat as well and to to, to some extent which of these routes you go down depends a little bit on how big your boat is whether you've got space for switch panels whether you're in a little fishing day boat or a or a big boat with multiple batteries and charging systems and all the rest of it so the, the, you kind of choose your level of sophistication of the circuitry partly depending on the boat but next time I will uh, expand this with a full switch panel master isolation switch and that kind of thing but uh, hopefully this has given you what you might need for a simple installation hope it's been useful be great if you could give us thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel thanks for watching